Today we will be studying cell migration using a wound healing assay, also known as a scratch assay. Migration is a key property of living cells and it is critical for normal development, immune response, and disease progression, such as in cancer metastasis. During the progression of cancer, tumor cells spread from the primary site and through the circulatory and lymphatic systems in order to reach and colonize distant organs. There are several ways to study cell migration, but the wound healing assay is one of the simplest and low-cost methods that uses materials that are readily available in most research labs. The basic steps involve creating a wound in a confluent monolayer of adherent cells by scratching away an area of the monolayer using a micropipette tip. This leaves a gap between two areas of cells, which will act as our wound. We can then measure cell migration based on the area of the wound that the bordering cells refill and the time it takes for the cells to refill the area. The measurements acquired are normally taken by taking pictures of each wound at specific time points, but here you can see a very neat way to visualize a wound closure using live cell microscopy. Similar to our last activity, we will be using capsaicin at different concentrations but this time we will be evaluating its impact on migration using our prostate cancer saline 2,2-RV1. We first rinse the excess FBS and media from our flasks. We then proceed to trypsinize our cells in order to detach from our flask. Then we inactivate the trypsin using complete media containing FBS making sure that we achieve a single cell suspension. Finally, we count our cells using tripe and blue exclusion method as described in our previous video. We can then see the appropriate number of cells and incubate the plate in order to allow the cells to attach. Now that our cells have attached to the plate, we can begin with our treatment. We begin by disinfecting all of our materials with 70% ethanol. You may remember that in our last two videos, we began by making serial dilutions of capsaicin using 96 well plate and then transferring it to our 96 well plate containing cells. This time I have already made the dilutions in 15 ml conical tubes. This is because the volume for each of the wells is larger and therefore we will be using 5 ml pipettes instead of a multi-channel pipetter. And now we have all the materials we need including the cells and the compound dilutions. First, we remove the culture media in order to replace with new media that contains our capsaicin dilutions. It is ideal to aspirate the media of only a few wells at a time in order to prevent the cells from dying. For the purpose of this video, we will proceed to quickly aspirate the media and replace with PBS in order to prevent that. Once we aspirate the media, we will make lines using a black marker across all wells. This line will serve as a reference in order to take the picture of a wound at the exact same side every time point. We will now add PBS to all of our wells in order to rehydrate them and to make our wounds. In order to generate our wounds, we will be using 200 microliter tips. There are several factors that affect the width of the scratch. For example, the amount of pressure that is applied and the angle at which the micropipette tip is positioned at the time of the scratch. By using the same size micropipette tip, 
we are ensuring that our widths are staying somewhat consistent. Using the micropipette tip, we will now scratch perpendicular to the black marker line. As we mentioned before, this black marker line will serve as a reference in order to take the picture of the wound at the same site every time. Now that we generated our wounds and our plate has been labeled with the correct concentrations, we will proceed to aspirate the PBS. This will remove any dead cells or any cells that were removed during the scratching process. This time, we remove the PBS from only one set of cells. This will allow us to replace each treatment individually and preventing the cells from drying. The first solution we will be adding is regular cell culture media, RPMI, but instead of containing 10% FBS, it contains 5% FBS. It is important to use low serum media when working with wound healing assays. This is because a reduction in the nutrients allows the cells to remain alive, but it also allows us to focus on cell migration and not cellular proliferation so we can reduce the variables that will affect our outcome. Next, we will be adding ceramide. This will act as a positive control. So for this treatment, we expect to see inhibition of migration. Since we are still working with capsaicin, our vehicle control will continue to be DMSO. For the next few steps, we will be removing the PBS from individual groups of treatments and replacing that PBS with a specific concentration of capsaicin. As opposed to our previous two experiments, we will only be using five concentrations of capsaicin. The concentrations will be the five middle concentrations that we previously used. So the highest one will be 33 micromolar and the lowest one will be two micromolar.
Once we have added all treatments, we are now ready to visualize our wounds. We can take pictures of this time point and will be considered time point zero. Now it is your turn to assess whether or not capsaicin has any effect on cell migration and at which concentrations. 